Hey YouTube, Happy New Year to everybody. It's Audi Olympian back with another video coming to you from Audi Olympia, where the world meets their music, movies, and speakers. Okay, today's video, I'm really excited to bring this content to you guys. Uh, on our family vacation down to Georgia in between Christmas and New Year's, uh, we were visiting the in-laws and I got the chance to go and check out some really cool high-end shops for stereo and home theater gear. So I got a little bit of footage. I wanted to bring that to you guys and let you know uh, what I experienced, what some of my thoughts were, and kind of let you know what are my next steps here, even in my own home theater. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get into the video. If this is your first time visiting our channel. We want to welcome you. Thanks for stopping by. If you like our content, then you know what to do. Okay, so our trip started out a little bit challenging as our flight was canceled Monday, uh, December 26th, right after Christmas. We we're flying down to Atlanta, Georgia to visit my in-laws, um, my wife's family. And flying out of Detroit, most of you guys know, or if you follow my channel, I'm based here in Michigan. Flight gets delayed, 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 then canceled. So it was not a very good start to the vacation there. All else fails, we rented a car, <clears throat> head out the next morning and drove down to Atlanta. Anyway, got down there and <clears throat> this was on Tuesday, drove all the way through. It was a pretty decent drive. Kids did pretty well. They're, they're not really good car kids either, but they did pretty well. And yeah, we made it down there safe. So vacation time is starting. What are we gonna do for the week that we're here visiting everybody? My brother-in-law down there is actually a home theater cinephile buff as well. And he likes the clip sound. He's got a pretty good setup, good room. Uh, I, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to go to his place and get any content there. I'll have to do that on a, another time that we're, we go down and visit our family down there. But he knew of a couple of audio shops there in the area. So I'll start out with this here quick little story. Our initial plan, I had looked up, um, if some of you guys know or follow the channel, OCD Hi-Fi guy, Mike Powell. He's got a channel, <clears throat> and I noticed on his website, he was based in Atlanta. It just says Atlanta. It doesn't have an address or anything, but it's got a phone number. So I thought, and I looked this up prior to us going down there, knowing that we were going to go in that area. I happened to look up his website because he really talks highly of the Jeff Rowland amplifiers. And I've been a little interested in finding uh, and hearing what one of them are like. And unfortunately, unfortunately for me in my area here, nobody carries uh, Jeff Rowland. Going down there, I figured, well, maybe I can connect up with him, check out his place. Well, anyway, long story short, it's a little bit weird. He doesn't have a, I don't think he really has a storefront. He must just sell online. So I called him up and we chatted and, you know, he's, he's a really cool, nice guy. This was on Wednesday when I called him. We had planned to get over there and check out his rig, which he's got a fabulous rig, high-end gear, super high-end gear. And we were going to go there on Friday to go and check it out. So he's like, yeah, just give me a call Friday and then, you know, I'll let you know where I am. So a little weird. I, he, there's no address. He didn't tell me where he was. So I, I'm thinking it's probably his home. And he just sells out of his house there through the website, which is fine. I'm not saying anything against that. Well, come Friday morning during breakfast time, I give him a call and it just goes immediately over to voicemail. And at the end of his message, uh, you get the message. The voicemail box is full. They can no longer take any more messages. So I thought, well, I guess there goes that plan. My brother-in-law says, well, you know what? I know of a couple of places we'll go and we'll go and check those um, check out the gear there. Kind of very nonchalantly, right? So we go to the first place. It's called Hi-Fi Buys, right in um, downtown Atlanta, kind of what's called the Buckhead area, if you're familiar with Atlanta at all. So walking in there, I had no idea what I was walking into. My mind was blown. It's major high-end gear, uh, from Luxman to JL Audio, Dan D'Agostino, um, Macintosh, Kef, Vandersteen, just major, major company line. So 
I got to check out a lot of that high end gear there. So first walking in there right to the left uh, was that enormous Wilson subwoofer that you saw then the uh, the picture that I'm, of the speaker that I'm standing next to in the thumbnail here. That thing was the size of a refrigerator and it was just crazy. I think those were dual 18 inch subwoofers in there. It was a, it was a subwoofer. So the first room that we walk into was my experience with a, my first time experiencing a major system of super high-end gear. Uh, they were Vandersteens, the Kento model, the flagship, with powered subwoofers, and I believe those were, you might see me look off to the side here a little bit, you guys, at my notes, because uh, I want to make sure I get everything uh, proper for you. They were the Kento Carbon uh, flagship speaker, and those were $41,000 a pair. And they were powered by Audio Research, uh, two mono blocks, which I believe were the uh, the 160M model, and those are <laughs> thirty-six thousand dollars each, each amplifier. Now I didn't really get into the whole to find out um, what it was, what the DAC or the CD player or whatever they were using here for, was it streaming or whatever they were using for the music. I was just completely floored and blown away by just the speakers and the amps itself. And that was a little bit of a smaller room. That was their smaller room. I, I think their small list room because they had about three dedicated rooms in there and they also had a home theater dedicated room in there which wasn't very, you can tell they're more two channel stereo, like even in the home theater room, they had a bunch of speaker boxes in the back of like unopened speakers and they were kind of using it as storage. So probably, probably a lot of people don't go in there for home theater. They mostly go in there for two channel stereo uh, headphones they have, and they were using all audio quest speaker cable, the very high end ones, right? The pair that cost, 2000 a pair, 4000 a pair, even $10,000 a pair. Power cables, all everything was audio quest. So, I don't really know. Now these systems sounded fantastic. They really did. I mean, jaw dropping. I don't know if the cables have anything to do with that. <laughs> I do know the speakers themselves have something to do with it, the amplifiers and the rooms. I do have some pretty good cables. I like Kimber cable. I've spent some money on cable. This I don't want to get into that whole debate there, but they had them in there. The only way to be able to tell would be to, to do some blind testing, which I would have liked to do. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have any of my stuff with me, right? And all they have is audio quest. So, but they were some pretty heavy duty looking cables. I mean, really cool looking ones as well. If you've ever seen them or, or um, had the chance to look at them or play with them, touch them and feel them, they're, they're quite well designed. I would have to say that. Now, does that trans, translate into better audio sound? I don't know. It seems like it would. Seems like it should make sense to do that, but who knows? Some people say it does, some people say it don't. So we'll just move on from there. However, the room with the Vandersteen speakers, it was great. The room was, was set up and they had some, some good diffusers and stuff as you can see here in the clips. And it sounded, it sounded great. It really did. It sounded magnificent. But I kind of felt my Golden Ear Triton reference speakers sound better than those Vandersteens. And those Vandersteens are twice, more than twice of the cost of the Triton reference. Triton references right now, I believe, are a little under 11,000. Or they had a price increase, so maybe, maybe 11,500, something like that. And again, those Vandersteens were 41,000 a pair. And I don't know, I just felt like my Triton references sound bad. I would have loved to have put them in that room, especially with those audio research tube amplifiers. And I believe those are, it's the 160 model, so I think they're 160 watts each. Yeah, I think my, my Triton references would have sounded better. Now, I don't say that to be, to boast or brag, but even in the early days when Sandy Gross came up with the idea for Golden Ear, uh, the company in the line, his model was, we make high-end affordable. Any of the Triton speakers have always been able to punch above their weight class. And so it didn't surprise me that I felt like the Vandersteens, 
that my, my Triton references could perform a little better than the Vandersteens. Not saying that the Vandersteens weren't a great speaker. They were. They did sound really good. They were a little sharp, though. And I don't know if they had the bass turned up on it. I really didn't play, play around with their... Um, I was just kind of in awe and just watching everything from, from afar and sitting in the sweet spot, stuff like that. Plus, I didn't have any of my music. I'm just listening to the music that the, the salesman was putting on for us. So I couldn't really get a good idea of how they perform. I'm sure they do perform a lot better than maybe even what we felt in their saw in the room. I just felt like my Golden Ear Triton references would have performed better. So the second room, I didn't really get a chance to go into. I kind of poked my head in there. They had a set of Kef speakers. I'm not sure which reference ones they were, but they had a Dan D'Agostino set up in there with uh, amplifiers and the preamp. And I didn't really get a, get a chance to look at that one uh, because they were working with another guy. Uh, the salesman was working with another customer in that room and they were displaying. So I didn't want to go in there and interrupt, but um, they had Dan D'Agostino amps and preamp with some kef speakers in there as well so i went into we went into the third room which i think was more of their main room it was the biggest room in that room there was the kef reference speaker the flagship reference um, right up above those reference speakers there would be the blades the kef blades so it was the reference five i believe it was yeah, I think that's what it was here. Let me look at my notes really quick. <laughs> uh, five meta speaker, yes. And those are just under $22,000 a pair. And it had a Luxman stereo amplifier. So it wasn't even pushing off of mono blocks. It just had the Luxman, I believe it was the M10X. And that is, I think around $18,000 for that amp or $20,000 for that amplifier. And it had a Dan D'Agostino um, preamp that it was using for processing. And it also had two JL Audio Gothams, version two. There's a version one and a version two. And those are $18,000 each. And so, yeah, we got to play in that room. And I did play around in there a little bit with the subs because that's kind of one of my my dream subs there. I've always wanted to check that out and play with those. And the Gotham specifically, I know they have the Fathom, which is the two 12 inch speakers, but the Gotham is the two 13 inch subs. That's the biggest one. It's a 400 pound subwoofer, very little, very little vibration on the cabinet. And I had cranked the volume up because of course, you know, in a lot of stereo places or two channel um, stores you go into they always have the subs turned down they, they very rarely ever turn them up but I'm a bass head so <laughs> I went in and I cranked it way up there and that thing was just it they felt like now I kind of know what an earthquake would feel like over in California uh, they were just shaking the foundation no rattle no vibration didn't clip at all the excursion of the subwoofers was easily three inches, just very tight, solid, clean, deep bass. Everything you would expect from a subwoofer and a little bit more. Now that whole system to me, that was my favorite one in that place there, was the Luxman and the Kef. That was so clean, so transparent, very holographic. It really put you into the music. And when you sat there and just listened to the music, you kind of just melted in your seat. Was it better than my references here? Mm, I don't know. That was a hard toss up. Those, those uh, Kef speakers were fantastic. Now, again, they are a different price point. They are double the price, more than double the price, or close to double the price of the Triton references. And it's a big speaker. It's probably about the same height as the Golden Ear references maybe a little bit shorter i didn't really go on and check out all the dimensions on it but it was a nice big speaker which i like um, now having experienced the paradigm speakers the paradigm founder ones that have bigger drivers bigger cones i do think or i do feel like i do prefer a bigger speaker versus something that's really compact but you know designed really really well 
uh, I think the bigger speaker just gives you a better, a better cascading sound. And of course the CAF have the concentric model with the mid range and then it has their tweeter in the middle of them. That's kind of always what they've been known for. And, but man, that system just sounded so good. I, I felt that system sounded way better than the audio research model blocks and Vandersteins. And that Luxman amp was, it was so clean. And it was only rated at about 150 watts per channel. I was kind of shocked. So that means the voltage and the current on it is probably very high. That's where you're gonna get the power from. And then talking with the owner there, you know, he said the same thing like a lot of people always talk about. It's hard to not, not go by the, the spec sheets. He said, you know, specs are almost useless. He said, you shouldn't even really look at specs today. He said, but that's what people like and that's what they, they want to understand and learn. And they think the spec sheets give them the real inner workings of what's happening inside of the equipment. He said, and it really isn't. He said, of course, we all know Watts is not something that you should judge any gear or equipment by. And that was my first time experiencing a 150 watt two channel stereo amp that sounded like it should have been a thousand watt model block amps. I mean, they were just so, so definitive and clean, like I said, holographic. It just put you right in the in the music there. I was kind of shocked that it was only at 150 watts. Now, I have my Emotiva amps. I'm not trying to say that my Emotiva are in the same class as that Luxman. But I have monoblock Emotiva amps that are 250 watts, and they wouldn't even come close to sounding like that. The room was semi-treated, wasn't even really fully treated, and it was quite the experience. So my first time experiencing some very high-end major systems. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I like the Luxman amp. If I am going to get me another amp, I think that might be one of my ways to go. They did have the JC, the JC1 Plus um, monoblock amps in there. And just talking with some of the sales guys. Now, of course, you know, they're always going to sell you, right? But the owner did say that that Luxman, he said, it blows away those the JC1 pluses, the monoblock amps. And I'm like, really? He said, oh yeah. He said, it's it just it blows it away. The design of the Luxman amplifier is just far superior to the Parasound amps. And that's what I have. I don't have the pluses, but I got the JC1s. And those do sound magnificent. So I'm very curious as to how a Luxman amp would sound here in my system. So that might be something I'm looking at in the future as well. Luxman, Gotham amplifier, or Gotham subwoofer, and I'm happy with my speakers. I don't think I would go higher than what I have right now. So our next stop, and this was more of my favorite stop, it was the home theater, the Atlanta uh, Home Theater Center. This place, when you walk up to it, when you go up to it, it looks like a castle. And it was about maybe 30, 35 minutes away from where we were at the Hi-Fi Buy shop. Also, if you wanted to check out the Hi-Fi Buys um, shop, they do have a website called HiFiBuys.com. And uh, I believe they do sell online. So they may even have photos and pictures of some of their, um, their store in there, which I'm sure they do. You can go check them out and look at some of the gear that we got to experience here over the past week. So we go to home, uh, Atlanta Home Theater. Looks like a castle walking in. Really, really cool setup. So as soon as you walk in, you know that it's, it's commercial, but it, it still has a really good home feeling. So it is like a giant home with a bunch of theater rooms in it. And it was just outstanding. So we actually got to have a tour. And again, I do got some clips and stuff here that I'm going to show you guys. I won't be able to have the sound on because, again, I don't want my video getting, getting uh, copyrighted. But I'll just tell you a little bit of how it felt and what we felt and saw here in experiencing the rooms. The first room was my favorite room. And this is kind of really got me on, got me determined here, gave me a little bit of 
energy to try to duplicate the same thing in my room. And I'm sorry I didn't get a picture of this room. It was under construction, so I kind of didn't want to take a picture of it, but I really should have. And the first room that he gave us the tour and we walked into, he, he told us it's under construction, this is what we're doing here. But that was my first time walking into a theater room, any room really. And it was completely noise canceled in the room. As soon as we walked in there, all the outside noise was gone. Totally, totally just a crazy experience. Almost like if any of you guys have ever experienced like an anechoic chamber. Not to that degree though. Or that feeling or that sound or that you get when you first put on your noise canceling headphones. And it covers your ears. And all the sound just kind of goes away. That's what it was like walking in that room. And it was crazy. I'd never even been in, I've never experienced that in a room before. And this wasn't a small room either. I want to say it was about 17 feet in width, uh, 10 foot in height, 20 foot in length. Now the real mind blowing thing about it was, it was under construction. It wasn't even a finished room. So they didn't have walls on the sides. I mean, they had walls in there, but there was no like drywall, flat surface, finished wall. And it was beams. You could see the outside wall, which, and then they had some diffusers and, and some sound deadening in between the beams. So it would be like you walking into a, a room that is still under construction or a house that's being built and they don't have any of the interior walls, just the outer, the exterior and the <laughs> outerior. I don't know if that's a word, <laughs> the exterior wall and the beams. And it was all painted. It was all black. So you really couldn't see, see much of detail of anything. Um, and then in between they, again, they had some sound deadening pads and some diffusers and stuff like that. And I asked him, Oh, so are you guys going to drywall and, and finish in here? He said, no, we're going to cover it with fabrics. They have this really heavy duty, thick black fabric. He said, we're just going to put those up there. Kind of like basically making a, a giant screen on the walls with this heavy duty, thick fabric. And then they were going to create some other, these diamond shaped, kind of the same thing, diamond shaped, sound deadening, um, wooden panels that they were going to cover with fabric as well and put those on the on the wall and then they were going to have lights behind it so it would illuminate behind it to give you a little bit of ambiance in the room but again what blew my mind it wasn't even a finished room they didn't even have walls up but as soon as you walked in the the sound was gone now what I try to maybe figure out how did that happen how did they make that work they had a very thick plush carpet on the floor. I mean, super thick, very comfortable, very cozy as well. Super thick. And they had these huge sound panels on the ceiling and they had them kind of layered, kind of like fallen dominoes. And they were, they almost covered the entire ceiling going all the way back. There was maybe like a foot of space going around them. So they didn't go wall to wall. They were maybe like about two feet short of the wall front and back and each panel was probably you know, maybe close to 12 feet in width and maybe about four feet in length and they were just layered and they came across the whole um, ceiling there so I thought wow that must that must be really what it what it was and what they did to sound cancel the noise in that room that didn't even have walls I was floored but because it was under construction, they didn't have any sound or anything going. So we couldn't experience anything in there. But just walking in that room and having all the noise get taken away was just mind blowing to me. Next up here was the main one, right? Now, if you guys recognize the place or if you want to look up, you know, um, Atlanta Home Theater, you'll know a uh, youth man did a video on this place here. And his is probably way more detailed and a lot more professional and better than mine. Um, a couple of years ago, maybe 2021, it might've just been last year, or it could have been even a little bit before that, maybe before the pandemic. So maybe 2019, I'm not sure when it was. Um, but he went and did a video in there and he talked more with it, you know, and that was his purpose of going was to do that video. Ours was just, 
we were just showing up and they gave us a tour. So I didn't have really anything prepared. I was just using my phone camera, uh, stuff like that. So um, we go into the home theater, the, the main one that they have there. And I'm trying to remember how many speakers he told me it was. Uh, it was like a 10.2, something like that. They only had two 18 inch subwoofers in that room. But that was the million dollar home theater room. Now, the only reason it's a million dollar, when Youth Man did the video on it, I believe it was around $800,000 home theater room. The only reason it's a million dollars today is just because of the cost and the inflation of everything going up. So that kind of kicks the price up to a million dollar theater. So it's the same exact one as the Youth Man video, but it's worth a million dollars today. So the first movie we watched in there, he put on a clip of Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, I actually haven't seen this movie yet. And I went and got it. I went and purchased it because it was crazy. All the sound effects. Now, here's what I experienced in that room. Because then the next clip, I had him put on the beginning or the race scene of Ready Player One. And then I think we watched a um, Godzilla versus King Kong clip after that, too. But being in that room, and it was a good size room, um, it did have tiers, so it went down just like a theater. Good high ceiling, probably if you were on the bottom floor, um, probably 12, 15 foot ceiling, easily. Maybe, maybe even a little bigger than that. And then about maybe 20 feet across. And they only had two 18 inch subs in there. But man, that thing was rocking like crazy. Now, smaller setting, you sit down and you feel like you're in this commercialized big home theater or um, movie theater actually i should say big commercial one sitting down in smaller setting with room treatments and they didn't have like much room treatment on the walls but the, the design of the room like these walls were so thick that it was pure isolation of sound in the room and the material was was kind of room treatment styled material like the columns and the walls and everything so the material they use is like designed to sound deaden and diffuse automatically so that way you wouldn't have to put anything up in the room very very cool unique room in there and so we sit down and we're listening it was almost overwhelming the amount of sound you're catching in a room like that because none of the sound is escaping. It's all in there. So you're hearing absolutely everything, every detail. Things that you wouldn't hear in, let's say, your living room, your bedroom setups, anything like that, right? Because they weren't noise canceled rooms. So it was like having a giant pair of headphones on in a movie theater. Noise canceled headphones in the movie theater. And it was, it truly was, I was, I was just, in awe but almost a little overwhelming because you you got to hear every single thing so it lets you know exactly how much work and effort of sound they put into movies when you're in a room like that you don't lose or miss any of it so all of the background sound and noise you get to hear again i think it would take a little bit of getting used to in that room it was still really cool i mean i it didn't bother me it wasn't like that for me at all there was just so much going on in movies you actually will appreciate in a room like that the the slower pace of movies that are in between scenes if you just have people walking and dialogue and very little action going in there because when the action happens and there's guns going and swoosh sounds and swoop sounds and then footsteps going over here and voices in the back and a car door shuts over here I mean, you're hearing all of that and you're catching it as well. It's not just ambient sound. It was, it was very present. All the detailed sound was very present in that room. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It really actually, to me, made me see how much we really don't get even in our home theaters. Now, if I want to dial up my home theater here and add everything up of all my gear, I probably have close to maybe $30,000 home theater and it was nothing <laughs> nothing compared to the million dollar home theater so on that price point there yeah that that home theater rocked 
But I think my next thing I'm going to work on here, you guys, is my floor and my ceiling in my room here and see how much noise I can get canceled out. Now, that was never even really a thought for me or a thought of, should I try and do that in my room? But now having experienced those rooms over there at the um, Atlanta Home Theater Center, yeah, I think that's going to be my next project over time here, trying different um, materials, fabrics. I still want to try to keep it very, very cost effective or cost efficient so that I can explain and, and bring you guys along the journey with me on that of, you know, keeping the price down as much as I can, but also trying to achieve the highest maximum potential of what you're of the project of what you're doing right so i think that's where i'm going to go i will probably have to put some good money into the carpet that's just going to have to be how it is um not sure i haven't really even looked at anything yet i got a decent sized room it's a little awkward um but i'm pretty sure that's probably where um majority of my cost is going to go that was my experience there you guys i know this was a much longer video I just wanted to, to get that out to you guys and I appreciate everybody watching. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share the video. You can also give us something in our super thanks. We really appreciate everybody. Again, happy new year. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, really appreciate you guys, all the new subscribers. Uh, I got some new cool things coming for 2023. Uh, we'll be able to have some giveaways. I've been able to do a little bit of working with some companies here, nothing real major, but hey, it's free stuff for you guys. So tune in for our next upcoming videos throughout this year. Happy New Year. We hope everybody had a great safe holiday and we will see you again on the next video.